Hello everybody and welcome to another PFL Tuts lesson. Today guys I'm going to show you how to create a really awesome YouTube background, show you the sizing, where to get the default template so you know what sizing to do for everything. So let's get right into it. When you go to upload channel art it tells you that the recommended channel art size is 2560 pixels by 1440. Now that sounds great, but once you're in Photoshop, you probably won't know what to do with those sizes. So the best thing to do is to click on how to create channel art. From there, you can scroll down to where it says channel art template. I've went ahead and put the link directly to that here on your screen. I'll also put that down in the description below so that you guys have it. Anyways, this is the template when you open it up. As you can see, it's 2560 by 1440, and it gives you the dimensions for the desktop maximum, the tablet, and the desktop minimum and mobile. Basically, the safe area here is what will display perfectly on every single device, no matter what is being used. And that's really what we're after. So with this, we can go ahead and get started. I've already imported my logo, but you guys can import your logo in any way that you would like to do. I already know that I want this to be kind of centered like so, probably up a little bit more. And I'm trying to do something very, very specific. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control E and then Control click my layer because it will actually create this outer edge for me, really nice and simple. I want this to be 3D, so I'm gonna go to New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Photoshop may take a minute because it's quite a bit of detail there. I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag to rotate these a little bit. I'll then zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better. And you can currently see that my extrusion is the grayish color that you have here. That's okay because we're not going to get into super depth details here, but if we do want to change it, we can go over here to the 3D tab, go down to the logo extrusion material, and change that diffuse color to whatever we would want. I'm going to go ahead and click on logo and then I'll adjust that speculation color and I'm just going to make that be darker like so. Probably something around like that. And I'll then hit OK. Now I have a couple of other things that I want to do. So I'm going to click on the environment, scroll down, and I want this to be reflecting. So I'm going to go ahead and bump this up here. And as you can see that is now reflecting very nice. I then need to do the roughness to kind of blur that out a little bit. And you guys can learn more about this in the 3D text tutorial that I am uploading soon to the channel, if it's not already up. So we're just going to kind of blur that out like so. I then want to grab my light, and I know that I want to adjust the light here so that the shadow is actually pointing up into the back more like this. You can see that shadow right there. I can then soften that shadow here and make that a much softer, tr softer transition. The scene I don't need to worry too much about simply because I'm actually going to be doing a different background layer for that. So real quick, let's go back to our layers. This is a 3D layer. If we click back on here though, we can actually start editing our layer the way that we want. So you can see the basic thing there. We are going to render this out later, but for now it looks good enough for us to kind of get the placement of everything that we want. I do know that I want to go ahead and make a really cool background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this color here, which is 1F2883. I'm just going to make a brand new layer here. I'm going to click here so I can actually fill that part of the image. And I'm going to disable this. I need to get rid of those selections first. Fill that background, put the logo back on it there. Now that I have the background, I'm going to go ahead and go to my gradient tool. I have it on radial and I'm using the black gradient to transparency. I'm going to click from the middle and go out. And that's a little bit intense, so let's go ahead and actually create a new layer above that. And let's go like that once again. And that actually needs to be inverted the opposite way. So let's go ahead and drag down. Eh, probably a little bit bigger than that. Hit Control-I to invert that. And you can see there it puts a nice soft background behind it. 
we can then lower that down a little bit, not too much, because I still definitely want to be able to see everything. And now let's go ahead and click on the render button for our text. Once we click on the render button, it's going to render out this uh, image so that it's a lot more crisp and has a lot more detail into it so that I can finish my composition the way that I want. It shouldn't take too, too long here. But as you can see, it's basically going around the entire image and anti-aliasing everything that is possible. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video until that is complete. The render has not completely finished, however, it's looking good enough for me to continue on with the tutorial because there's another 11 minutes left for this to finish rendering out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the escape key. And when I hit the escape key, it basically just freezes what it's doing at the specific moment and it'll allow me to finish it later if I'd like, but I probably won't do that. So now that I've hit the escape key, you can see my logo is here. I have my background, everything's looking really, really good. However, if I decide to go ahead and do anything other 3D wise with that logo, it will probably mess up. To finish this off, I've already decided that I want to take from our website the menu that we have here at the top. So what I'm going to do is go all the way like this and just simply cut this out. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that background. I then want to go ahead and select the background from behind. I'll actually put it at 100% because I want to make sure I get all of the white out of that background. And now you can see we have our cool little buttons here. I'm going to go ahead and copy those, go back to the channel art, and paste those. And I'm simply going to drag these down so that they are in the area of our template. And I can do this by kind of hiding the background a little bit to see that they are definitely still inside of the area where they need to be. Now they're not real big, but that's okay because I don't think that they really should be that much bigger than the area that I'm trying to work with. So I think that looks really, really good. Only thing that I'm thinking about doing is below that, putting something like design is our lives. And I want to use something that's kind of cursive -y and really pretty looking. So I'm going to go through the fonts here and just select something that I kind of like the look of. That's not bad there. I'm going to go ahead and leave it black for now. We'll probably change that later on. I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller. And I'm going to simply drag that right here so that it's at the top of our logo. I'll then go back to the background layer and go ahead and bring that opacity all the way back up. I don't know about you, but that's a really good logo so far. All that's left really is to put social media icons, but I'll do that later. The main point of this video, guys, was to show you how to use the spacing template correctly to actually make a cool, awesome YouTube banner. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and also subscribe if you're new. I'll see you all later.